Okay. So welcome, everybody. It is just after noon, after 12 o'clock here, Eastern. And uh, my name is Ralph Michelle. We are going to be talking about technical analysis. So I'm thinking everyone can hear me okay. You should be able to see my uh, presentation with my uh, amazing photo of me with that amazing amount of hair that I have. And uh, please do tell me if anyone is not able to see my screen. I do want to share my desktop now and um, bring up my PowerPoint in a little bit of a different way. And um, there we go. Show slide from the beginning. So is anyone currently using technical analysis now? Just out of curiosity. You guys, anyone using technical analysis now, yes or no? <clears throat> Some. Yes, okay. Awesome. Make sure everyone's putting everything in the chat, by the way, because I do know there's a Q&A area, and I am not really paying attention to the Q&A stuff. All right, it's all going to be out of the chat. I can only have so many windows open at a time. Um, so, okay, so some yes and no. Okay, now, of the ones that are saying yes, who's using this, who's using technical analysis effectively? Anyone? Anyone using technical analysis effectively? One, Jan, thank you. Some, yeah, that see, this is this is where the this is where I notice a lot of things, and these are the type of questions I'll ask. The sometimes and this or that and the other thing, you know what happens? People typically don't have a set of trade rules and a set of trade plans that they use every darn time they trade, and that's what I find is a major problem. Guys, you need to be extremely diligent and. Um, um, extremely efficient and extremely boring. Okay, and what I mean by boring is that you do the same thing over and over and over again. Please, please, you guys have to know that for you to be a successful trader, you need to have a series of events happen and do that series of events over and over and over again. Okay, whether it's stock, options, futures, or forex. First of all, technical analysis can be used on all aspects of trading, which is awesome, but you need to be using the same type of philosophy, the same mantra, your same ideas on that strategy every time. If you're going to use technical analysis, if you're going to use bull flags and bear flags, great, use them. Use the same, and then use the, the use the setups the same way. Don't decide that one day because it's a Tuesday afternoon and it's raining outside, I'm going to look at the flags and take my entries over after it breaks out, and then over here I'm going to take it when I should, and over here because it's a different day, I feel like it. I'm going to do something different and experiment. If you want to experiment, then do that in a paper account and practice. Okay, if you're going to be doing this for consistency, you need to be doing the same thing over and over again. And so when technical analysis comes into play, is the efficiency and the effectiveness of it is when you, when you make your trading a business plan and you start to look at your technical analysis as, the, as a core tenant of how you're going to trade, basically how you would, if you had a business and you said, okay, my executables for a, a normal Monday morning are like this. Okay, you go into your, you know, you, you come into your office and you're like, These, this is how we do our stuff. Bang, 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 and bang, whatever your business is. That's what technical analysis is. I'm going to look at technical analysis and I'm going to place the trade based off of what I see in the market conditions with the trend of the market and knowing what I'm doing and doing that on every single trade. Uh, Michael, I do have trade plans. And actually, they are in my options class. The, uh, the trade plans I give you are the ones that are in the options class that I use. They are my trade plans, okay? Um, and when, I, when people ask me about those trade plans, I tell them, take the trade plan, that's the way I like to trade, and um, tweak it to how you like to trade. Now, are there some tweaks in that a little bit for me personally as well? well absolutely. But the bottom line is, uh, to answer your question, I do have a trade plan, but I do have it ingrained in my head already, okay? <clears throat> and so even with my technical analysis and the patterns, I was just in Dallas this past week with Fausto at the trade show, and I was asked by a few people to start writing code for their technical analysis program so they could have it kind of be like, like artificial intelligence and, and finding things. 
and uh, basically the conversation was like this: I'm a, tr I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not a trader. I'm a, I'm a. Uh, this, this guy was telling me I'm not a trader. I'm a programmer. I program stuff for a company. I'm not going to say the name of the company. And so basically, what we want is someone like you who sees these patterns to basically come in and say, this is what I'm seeing, this is what I'm recognizing, and then they want to basically see uh, see what I'm seeing and what's in my head and be able to put it into a software package uh, to help build out to see these technical patterns. And I said, well, how are you going to read my brain? And that's basically what some of these things are. Um, and um, I don't know. They asked me if I'd write it, and I'm like, I don't know how to write code. Are you kidding me? Uh, I, I, it's, I, I wouldn't know what to do. So um, anyhow, to, to kind of belabor Michael's point there is do I have it written down? These patterns are ingrained into my head. If I look, I'm right now not even staring at a chart, and I can just totally pick a bear flag pattern, right? I can just see it in my head. Um, so yes, my trade plans are in my head. They're all written down. Um, the patterns I teach, some of them, I'll be honest, some of them I still look at. Next to my computer, guys, just so you know, next to my computer at home, to this day, is a printout of um, – uh, of the the technical setups I like to look at, and the um, on the on the charts and the um, candlestick patterns I like to trade. Okay, to this day, the only time they get moved around is if I have to reprint them because they've been there so long, or I, I'm literally moving offices in my house right now uh, just recently because we just had a new baby girl. So other than that, <clears throat> they're still that they've been sitting there all the time. Okay, so here's me doing this for, for quite, I've been in the education field for six years now, and I still have the darn slides printed out next to my computer to this day. Okay, so if you don't, where do you expect your consistency to be? Now, that doesn't mean that I'm smarter than you. I'm, I'm probably not as, I'm, I'll be honest with you, you're probably, most of you guys are probably smarter than me. I'm just a C college student, you know? So my thing is I visually see things in a different way because of my architectural background, okay? It just happens to be that because of my architectural background, I can see those things. But I train my eyes to see patterns, and I can teach you to train your eyes to see patterns, right? That's all it is. Pattern recognition, technical, technical analysis, pattern recognition is all about training your eyes to see the chart you're already looking at in a different way, okay? That's all that is. And that's talking about the flags and, the, and all the candlestick patterns, okay? Now, here's a really cool quote, a couple of them. You have to, be, have to prepare to win to be able to win. That's Zig Ziglar, okay? Anything you do in life, you need to be prepared for, right? If you're prepared and you have a trade plan and you're prepared for what you're going to get into the market to do, you have a, would you agree that that would give you a better probability of success than if you just turned on a computer, no background, no clue of what you're doing, turned it on and said, I'm going to go place a trade right now, right? Wouldn't you agree that the person who's prepared to go in saying, if the market goes up, I'm doing this, the market goes down, I'm doing this, the market goes sideways, I'm doing this, Right? And if it does those three things, here's the type of trades I could put on, and this is what I'm expecting outcomes to be, right? The trend is the most important factor in every trade. Please remember that. Whether you're trading up, down, or sideways, the trend is the most important factor, okay? People tell me that their consistency in trading is they haven't had any consistency in trading, and I keep saying, well, are you following the trend? And they say sometimes. I'm like, well, how do you sometimes prepare to be ready for the market and sometimes prepare not to be ready for the market? You need to follow the trend. And, if, and, and here to, to, the, to the counterpoint to that, if you're going to trade counter trend, then you need to know what the trend is so you can trade counter trend, right? Just because if you're a, if you're a contrarian to the market and you're going to trade the opposite, you still need to understand what the trend is so you can trade opposite. Isn't that correct? Right? So in order for you to understand that, you need to know what the trend is. So, you know, people just go out there and they're just like, yeah, well, you know, I'm going to um, – I'm going to, uh, um, sorry, just, I'm, I, I want to counter trend trade. That's not a problem, but that means that you have to know what the trend is to beginning, in the beginning. And, the repeti and repetition is the key to learning. Folks, no one is going to get anything you teach them in life the first time and do it perfectly, okay? So what is technical analysis? What is it? Why should I use it? Who uses it? 
And I'm sure if you've heard me before, you've seen this screenshot, right? This is a trader on the floor of this New York Stock Exchange, and that third monitor on the bottom right is a chart. He has two lower studies, okay? One's moving a little faster than the other, and so they are some lower studies on his computer. These, this is a floor trader on the New York Stock Exchange floor. He is looking at technical analysis, okay? So to think that you are using some type of system that no one else is looking at, you're wrong. Technical analysis is being used by floor traders, by me, by you, by hedge funds, by mutual fund guys, um, by everybody, okay? Why should you use it? Well, number one, wouldn't it be helpful to know? And let me ask, let me ask this question. Well, before you put a trade on, folks, on a directional trade, up or down, okay, let me ask you this. For everyone in here, do you, on every trade, know your target, your entry, your stop, your time frame on every trade you put on? Yes or no? No. Anyone else being honest? One person, yes. Most of the time, guys, and I'm not trying to, okay, so some of the questions, let me, let me, let me do one thing right here. Most people are saying no, which is what I normally expect. Um, let me just say this, so, because I don't want to disrespect anybody. I don't want to be rude or think I'm, uh, think I'm being disrespectful to you, okay? Um, I'm just honest and direct, and I think when it comes to money, that's the best way you can be. But um, when you put in sometimes, when you put in um, once in a while, Guys, you got you have to be consistent. Have to. You know, you know, if if you said that with think about the things you do in life that you're successful at. If you went to work and um and your answer was do you do your job to so you can get paid, so you can put food on the table, and your answer was do you do your job and you said sometimes, would you still be at that job? Unless of course it's a government job and they pretty much don't fire you. But um, if you think about that, if you go into your work and then three days out of that work week, you don't do your job, are you going to be there long? No, right? No, that you're, you're not going to be at a job if you can't physically perform the job duties and, you, and two days a week you feel like doing them and three days a week you don't. Okay, you can apply a lot of the, the logic and the strategies that you, and you, you, you use in your daily life to trading. If you have a business, you need a trade plan. If you want to be trading consistently, you need to be doing consistent things. If you want to work and you want a job and you have daily job duties that you need to perform, you need to do those job duties before or else you get fired. So why would you put money in the live market and trade against professionals and not have a set of trade rules and a set of trade disciplines that you follow on every second trade? Right? Just think of that from a logical standpoint. I mean, we're not doing anything yet other than just thinking logically. You know, you guys need to know that principle right here. You guys see this little principle that I've got here, the test principle? This is a priceless little principle that I've, I've, I know I'm not the only person, but I use this and I've developed it. It's called the test principle. You know how easy this is? Does anyone know what the test principle stands for? Because I know that to some people in here that know me already. <clears throat> What do you guys think? Okay, cool. So, does anyone in here remember the test principle from uh, from being time entry stop? Yep, you, Mike, you're missing one thing. So you got you got your target, your ent there you go, Jake. Thank you. Target entry stop time frame. Okay, folks. When I teach people in my options class, in my technical analysis class, and there are a few people in here, I will I we talk about this. What is your target? What is your entry? What is your stop? What is your time frame? Folks, have a trade journal. Write it down and put it in there on every trade that you're putting out. Okay? You want to buy a stock? You want it to go up? Great. Where do you think it's going? Where are you going to enter? Where's your stop? How much money are you going to lose? And what's the time frame you're willing to be in that trade? Okay? If you get nothing else but that out of this class, you're already ahead of the game. That's the bottom line. If you get nothing else out of this next, over this, you know, little session we're doing here, you're ahead of the game. Because the majority of people, and the questions I ask, I continue to ask because I want to see what the reaction is to the questions. I kind of do my own, you know, my, my own little environmental psychology polls all the time. And you guys always come up with the answers that, and they very rarely get shocked. 
Majority of people do not trade a plan, don't have a set of plan, tr uh, trading plans, don't have a set of trading rules, and do different things on their trades, and they're not consistent. At some point, guys, at some point, I don't care who teaches you. I don't care if it's me. I don't care if it's Fausto. I don't care if it's, if it's um, you know, anybody else out there. At some point, you, the, the philosophies and the principles that you're taught have to be put, to, put into the market on a consistent basis, right? And a lot of times, people are taught, but they don't follow through which means that what is, what is the missing ingredient of why some people, why most people aren't successful? Because let's be real, there are a lot of successful traders out there, not just me, not just Fausto. There's a lot of different philosophies out there, not just me, not just Fausto. So when you're teaching somebody, does it end up coming down to the end user, right? Isn't that right? I mean, come on, let's, let's be real. We're all adults. When it comes down to it, doesn't it come down to you pressing the button? Now, if you weren't taught, co co taught correctly, that's a different story. But if you're taught correctly and you go out and do the wrong things, whose fault is that? That can't be the instructor's fault because they taught you correctly. If you weren't taught and you, or you chose not to get taught, that's a different story. But if you were taught correctly, you know, then you should be looking at doing the same thing over and over again. And if you're not, it's not the instructor's fault. If you've never been taught, well, guess what? You're being introduced to it now. Get on, get on the bandwagon. Get with me and start pushing down the road so we can start looking at the darn trades the right way. That's just the bottom line. So when we're looking at charts, there's a lot of different things we can look at. I don't know if you guys are candlestick or line chart people, um, how you like to see what you're looking at. I like to look at candlestick charts. You know, um, I think they're a nice, effective way to look at the market. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bunch of patterns you can actually start to recognize within charts uh, with, by using these. So I'm going to show you one you know, right now. You know, this is um, uh, D-A-N-G. Okay, check this out. D-A-N-G has a, has a technical pattern, a, a candlestick pattern right here. Okay, right here, these two candles that are boxed together down here in the bottom are showing you what's called a bullish harami, okay? And so that pattern is indicating that um, you're going to get a, a bullish trade coming out of, out of this pattern, okay? So when you look at a, a bullish harami, the bullish harami is what's essentially showing you a downtrend, okay, where the, um, where the and it's, this barely qualifies, just so you know, where the bullish day, this white candle, and it's called a... Uh, you know, you know, it's called this pattern because of the fact of, of how it's set up. But, you know, you, you're looking at this Harami basically showing you the pattern with, within the downtrend, okay? And then basically, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, I'm just, I'm, I've got, I'm getting this cough back from being on the plane over the weekend. <clears throat> basically, the bullish candle is engulfed, and it could be also called the bullish engulfing, uh, with inside of the um, inside of the the day before. Okay, so this you can see this red candle. Okay, and the body of this white candle falls completely with inside this red candle. If you were to draw a little line, you see that bottom. Okay, the 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 the, the close of the red day, and the close of the white day, and the the open of the red day and, and the, uh, sorry, the, uh, the open of the, uh, sorry, the close of the white day. You can see this is entire white candle fits inside this, 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 um, this, this candle. That's in indicating a bullish signal, okay? It's a bullish signal that then takes off the next day, okay? So basically, if you took this trade with a stop, okay, with a 50% retracement through this candle, okay, Right through here, oops, boom, right here. So you get into this trade and say, I'm going to get in anywhere above this, this number, okay? And basically, that's going to be my stop loss. This is a nice little trade that you can take right there, you know? These are the things that you can see the patterns that are within the markets for you to actually go out and place trades within the markets, okay? It's a very simple way to just look at things. Now, I don't expect you to know these patterns out of the gate. 
but I do expect you to learn them. Okay, it's not hard to learn. I give you guys an entire cheat sheet to go over how to find them. Uh, I'm sorry, you know what the, what they are, and how you can literally go and say, okay, yeah, I can read the pattern. Boom, Ralph told me that this is the pattern I can read. You know, so when you're looking at charts, if you could start looking at you know different patterns within charts, and you can d delineate what's going on and how they're being traded, then basically you could say, okay, look, I've got a, a high probability of being right. Okay, if I'm seeing if I'm seeing a, you know, a trade that I can put on and basically saying, okay, you know what, what is this? You know, what can I do with this type of trade? Here, here's another one. I'll give you a second one. Here's Yoku. Yoku is going to be the opposite of what we just talked about. If there's a bullish one, here's a bearish one right here. You see this nice run up. You see the nice candle on this bullish day, a nice bearish day right here. Take the trade. Boom. Okay. Now, what are you getting right here? Isn't it interesting that you're getting kind of two patterns back to back? Check this out. You're getting the bullish and you're getting the bearish pattern. So you had a bullish pattern. I'm sorry, a bearish pattern for a couple of days. And then you're like, okay, I'm getting in at 24 and change. And then look, this day I'm now getting a confirmation that I should be taking this bullish. So you get your bearish trade, you get your bullish trade. Okay. I'm not making this stuff up. Here's, here's the live charts, folks. I mean, these are the things that you're not seeing. I mean, if I, if I boxed this out for you, you'd be able to see it. Wouldn't you? I mean, if I came in here and said, guys, take a look at right here. Guys, take a look at right here. Okay? This is, this is what I want you guys to start looking at. If I did that for you, yes, you'd be able to see it. Right? But I'm not, I'm not going to sit, you know, sit uh, you know, every day and basically be um, drawing patterns for everybody. To, to, you know, to show you guys what to do. I'll teach you what to do. <clears throat> uh, would you say there are two dojis representing indecision after that bearish candle? Um, which bearish candle? Are you talking this one up here? Or these two days up here? Okay, this one? So this one is, um, well, this one... Oh boy, we said yes to both. <laughs> well, this this is the this is the pattern right here. So this 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 extended doji, so to speak, is indicating that the break in the direction you're expecting it to go, right? And then over here, these two dojis are showing you days of of indecision. This one right here. Yeah. Well, I understand where you might think that that is just a doji. But in reality, it's a doji um, that's not at the top and not at the bottom. It's kind of hanging out in the middle of nowhere. And so um, you're not seeing sputtering. You're really seeing the downfall. I mean, look, you've got a pretty nice volume day right here, right? You see this day? Pretty good volume. Uh, there definitely is a fight up and down, but you're rolling over from a high. And the pattern is – this is the confirmed pattern these two days. And this third day is, is a bearish day. Um, if this was more evenly, uh, even to the upside and the downside, uh, more like this one today, and even so with this one today, it's not exactly perfect. Um, I, you really want to see something that's got a, um, this, these three equal pieces. And as you can see, you've got a piece here and you got a piece here. And you've got a piece that's twice as long here. So a doji technically is a piece that is like that, okay, versus these pieces that are uh, different sizes, okay? You want a doji to be more, um, more of an equal, 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 like a third, a third, and a third, okay? Which would be more of a spinning top. Okay, so not really to what you're thinking about there, but close, all right? But this is where we could use these patterns to start recognizing, um, uh, well, Andy, what charts are you using? If you don't mind me asking, because this is good for everybody. If, you're, if you think, see, and this is, thank you, Andy, for answering these questions, because if Andy's thinking it, I bet you there's someone out there thinking it, okay? If you don't have good charts, you're screwed. Excuse my language. You need to have some good charts here, guys. If you don't have good charts, please tell me what you're using. 
uh, Andy, if you don't have good charts, may I recommend? Uh, well, let me take that back. I don't recommend anything. Okay. Free stock chart charts. Dot com. I don't know if I can spell right. There we go. Now, what do you think freestockcharts.com cost? Free. Okay, so here's a nice way you can actually go and get some charts, okay, for free. Now, I do know that NinjaTrader has some pretty rocking and rolling stuff, okay? They have a pretty, they have, oh, you know, I, I know, um, Ninja Trader has some really awesome stuff. Think or Swim, Trade Station. Um, <clears throat> a lot of places have awesome stuff. It's just a matter of what do you want to pay for it, okay? If you want to just get started and start looking at stuff, you know, you can come in here and reset all these all these things so that way you can um, re, re, redo everything. Now, I don't use these that a lot. I do have a, a su su subscription. Um, and uh, I do go in here once in a while and do stuff. But, um, you know, I can come in here and redraw anything I want. I can look at a stock um, right up here. Just say, hey, you know, what day, what do I want to look at? I can look at Apple. This is free, all right? I know the guys that work this, uh, this guy Mike. Um, I can't remember, uh, can't remember Michael's last name. If you have any, if you want any information on this, send me an email. I'll direct it to the right person. But these are free. They do have a paid version as well. I also know that uh, um, Ninja Trader has some pretty good stuff. Um, for searching for, for stuff. I also know that um, um, my concerns are searching for, pat, um, you know, uh, writing code and stuff like that. Um, you know, Thinkorswim, TradeStation, they have great charts. Uh, it's just a matter of what you're looking at and who you're doing it, doing what you're doing with it. Uh, Jerry, uh, a lot of professional traders look at bar charts. I don't know. Um, I know a lot of professional traders that look at, 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 um, that look at uh, candlestick charts. So, um, you know, I, I guess we can go round and round and say, well, I look at candle, I look at, I look at bar. What I care, Jerry, is that you find what works for you and you make money doing it. Some guys, they've been on the floor for so long or they, they learned a certain way that they won't get out of that, okay? So if you, look, if you want a free version of charts, you can come up here. They've got a lot of stuff, a lot of robust information that you can do to use the system. Um, can you zoom on free stock? Um, you can zoom in. I'm just scrolling in the mouse right here. I'm zooming in and out. All I'm doing is scrolling in and out. Okay, so you can scroll in and out. Okay, you can change it from a daily to a an hourly to a weekly, and then scroll in, right, and scroll out. So yeah, there's a lot of flexibility here, guys. If you have any questions about that, again, just send me an email. I'll send you a link to a guy who can do that for you or get you set up, or quite honestly, you can just go there yourself. All right. Um, so, um, you know, that being said, you can look at, you know, you don't, I, I teach guys, I teach you the patterns and the way to trade. Nothing that I do is splat, is platform specific. Looking at what I teach has nothing to do with a platform. I just like the platform I'm using. Okay. Fair enough. Anything I'm going to show you, you, you do not have to be a thinkorswim client because I'm using it. All right. I like it. It's a good platform but you don't need it for what I'm teaching you. You don't need TradeStation. Do I have a platform there? Yes, I do. You know, um, so I've got multiple platforms that I have, but you can use any platform that you want. Um, I don't know about Ninja. Uh, Dave, Dave, give a call here. We can answer some more specific questions about the platform. Uh, Think and Ninja provide pre and post trades. Uh, pre and post trades, you mean pre and post trading you're trading pre-market and post-market because i know you could trade pre-market on thinkorswim i believe uh i'm not sure though i i don't really trade i have traded um i don't know the exact answer to your question dave so let me without looking stupid um um i would tell you to, to just check with thinkorswim and ninja and see if you can trade pre and post but i know that ninja has a really sweet futures platform um but i haven't I, I i do a lot of thinking out loud so that's why i'm trying to think but just send me you know i would send them an email if you need someone to get in touch with at ninja or thinkorswim you can contact me or you can just contact them directly but 
That being said, folks, there are things that you can see within the charts by using candlesticks, okay? You can look at a candlestick pattern and say, boom, look at what I can do with this. This is pretty sweet, you know? I can see these patterns within there. It's called pattern recognition. I can teach it to you. You know, it's not something that takes a very long time to, to grasp the concept, but will take you a couple of days or, or a couple of weeks to really get the, uh, the patterns really, really dialed in. You know, you need to start looking at the trades and saying, hey, you know what? I can make money with this pattern, but I just need to learn the darn pattern, okay? And so there's another pattern out there. Here, check out Visa. There's a bullish engulfing pattern right at the bottom. I mean, who would, who, you know, when you're, looking at, when you're looking at Visa, what do you see here, right? You see all these things I'm starting to look at? Look at this right here, this little, this bullish engulfing pattern where you had this really large white candle day, and boom, it took off, okay? That's a pattern right there. Now, can I teach you that pattern? Absolutely. If you went out and I taught you a bullish engulfing pattern and you traded it bearish, is, um, is that my fault or your fault? Right? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Everyone knows that philosophy, right? I could teach you the pattern, but you need to put it on and execute it correctly. You know, I need you to go out in the market and become a sniper. I can teach it to you, okay? But I don't know how you're going to trade it. If you know what you're doing and I can teach you what you're doing, you'll be much more successful. But here, take a look at this chart, guys. This is the difference between what I'm looking at in the bottom right and what people t standardly look at in the top left. Now, the reason I bring this up is because this, start, this stock is now trading for about a penny, and it's pretty much worthless. But this is when I was looking at it a couple of years ago. Very detailed information here. Look at this. Both flags with targets. Both flags with, I mean, uh, head and shoulders, uh, bo double bottoms. Uh, this is the double bottom target up here, head and shoulders with the break. Uh, both flag with the, with the targets. Folks, when I am going in the charts and doing this, now, guess, I don't write this down on every trade. I write it down either in my journal or in a trade. I do one or the other, okay? But I also know when, when I put a stop loss in place, I know where my stop is because I've basically decided off of a technical pattern what I am looking to do. Now, let me take a step back for a second. Has anything I said not made sense to anybody? Am I using... You know, am I being overly logical or overly simplistic, or am I talking too much jargon over your head? Just out of curiosity, how are we? So, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting a couple answers back that I'm doing okay and I'm just fine. So, see what I'm talking about, guys? I can show you guys to make money in the market. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't have to have a PhD in astrophysics or a PhD in economics to be able to make money in the market. I just need you to teach you some pretty simple, straightforward, direct strategies where you can make money. Boom. That's it. End of story. That's all I care about. I'm not going to be talking about some quantum physics type of an algorithmic garbage. I know a little bit of how some of these things are put together, but do you think I, do you think I care? I'll give you an even better example. Does anyone out there know truly how the electric in their home gets delivered to their home? I mean, the whole process of how electricity actually works and the turbines and using everything to get it to work so it gets to your house. Does anyone really, really know how that works and could, and could rebuild it themselves? Anyone? Because I don't. Let me ask you something, guys. Can you walk in a room and turn on a light switch? Right? So do you need to know how electricity works to where you walk in a room and turn on a light switch? Absolutely not. Right? Exactly, right? Even solar panels are a mystery. You know, I, 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 I can't, you know, I went to school for architecture. I couldn't build a, a, you know, tell you how, you know, every step of the way how electricity works. You know? Here's another thing. Does anyone know how to put their, their engine together in their car? Or do you guys just put the key in the ignition and go? There you go. Look, John Rich, there you go. I know exactly how it works. So there's, there's the guy who can build us a turbine, okay? But one out of, right? What I'm just what I'm trying to get at is that you don't need, you don't need, um, <laughs> I built engines. That's great. See, there's always one, right? But you don't, what you agree, John, though, is you can turn a light switch on just like, you know, your, that advantage 
that you can build, would you agree that it does not give you any advantage to flip on the light, light switch? You and, jo you and Peyton can get together, right? Right? You and Peyton can get together and build these things, but it doesn't give you guys an advantage to walk in a room and just flip a, um, uh, about turning a light switch on, right? So my point is, is that a lot of us get so bogged down in the minutia of things that we forget that what we're here for, and we we'll forget that we're here to make money. Okay. Uh, they did another question to come in. What charts am I using, uh, Jan? It depends on what I'm trading. I use daily charts, like Jerry says here, um, and I use uh, predominantly, predominantly I'm using daily charts, but I do day trade. So I do have uh, you know other patterns and other things that I'm using for day trading. <clears throat> I don't do a lot of day trading. Majority of what I do is overnight holding positions and swing trades for options. That's predominantly what I work on, okay? And I use technical patterns and setups. These are the things I'm going to be teaching you in my class, okay? This is what I teach you guys, okay? Knowing what technical analysis is, understanding support and resistance, looking at moving averages, crossovers, Bollinger Bands, and linear regression, looking at the candlestick patterns, okay? Here they all are, okay? These are the ones that, not all, these are the ones that I teach, okay? And then looking at the price patterns, okay? So we've got our candlesticks, candlesticks, and then boom, price patterns, okay? And then these are our oscillating indicators, and I threw the Fibonacci's down here, MACDs, stochastics, RSIs, and CCIs, you know? Now, all this stuff that I've got here is, it's a lot, but there's a ton more out there, isn't there? Okay, I've distilled out the things that I know and what I can teach you. I'm not saying that someone else might have a system out there that works, um, but here's ones that I know have consistency and proven, proven track records, okay? I love looking at candlesticks pat candlestick patterns and price patterns specifically. That's really where I hone in a lot of my time, okay? And I can teach you guys these patterns, so that way when you go in the market, especially with the price patterns, you can have an idea of direction, you can have an idea of what you're looking for, and so you can place these trades with some consistency, you know? And when it comes to price patterns, you know, a lot of people, you know, I talk to are just like, well, Ralph, you know, it's great that you know the patterns, but how are you going to, you know, you know, what do you want to do with them to see where they're going? Well, first of all, let's take a look. Let me get out of this, right? On something like Caterpillar, okay? So here's Caterpillar. And so here's this nice little bear flag, okay? It breaks and it drops, okay? We've had a couple of days of retrace, and now we're having a day that it's dropping, okay? So yes, I have puts on Caterpillar, okay? This is not a recommendation for any of you to go out and do what I'm doing right now because this trade's been on, and so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with it, okay? But the bottom line is I took it off of a technical pattern. I started looking at what I saw so I can say, hey, you know what? I want to place this trade, like a while back on McDonald's, MCD, right? You can take a look at McDonald's. Uh, come on. It's... I mean, folks, think about this. If you can actually start looking at patterns within a chart and starting to pick out your target, your entry, your stop, and your time frame, what else? Here's a question for you. What else do you need to know? Anyone? To place a trade, what else do you need to know? Anyone? Anyone got something that I'm missing there? Target, entry, stop, time frame. Okay, thank you. That's one. That's one. That's one good thing. S size of the trade. Well, the size of the trade is going to be predicated off of your account value, right? So each one of us is going to have a different account value to go with. So, but the argument is though, and that's a very good answer. <clears throat> um, I can teach you all. I can teach you all the. Uh, the way to place the trade, right? And then every one of you would be putting different amounts of those trades into your account because you all have different account sizes, okay? So, the, Jerry, you're absolutely right. The money management and um, – well, I'm going to scroll up so I can see this a little bit bigger. Uh, and Gary, you're, you know, Jerry and Gary, you both, both absolutely right. 
You know, those are things that have to be taught, no doubt. But in terms of placing the trade, you know, the um, and uh, Andy, the answer to your question, support and resistance, is that that's where your targets and entries and stops are going to be built around. You're going to be using support and resistance to place your targets, your entries, and your stops. Okay. So um, and uh, Jan about volume. Um, Depending on the on the um, on the strategy, if you want to break out on volume or you don't want volume because you want it to stay within a trading pattern, so these are all very good things to bring up. And depending on the trade you're putting on, they become very very important for you. Okay, I want to see a break on volume, right? And so I can teach you that. Okay, but in terms of the actual trade itself, if you were just putting the trade on and I said, okay, you want to go buy a stock at 50, where do you think it's going? Where's your stop? How long you think it's going to get there, okay? And when are you going to enter the thing, right? But you're right. There are other sub factors. Uh, well, now sub support and resistance is 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 based off based off of like I just said, it becomes into what the stop is um, and all that stuff. So to your point, here's McDonald's going back a few months ago. Here's this beautiful uptrend, pulls back, take our entry. So here we have our entry, we have our target, we have our entry, we have our stop, and we have our built-in time frame, okay? So why did I have this on here? Well, because in the last couple of times I've been showing people, um, this is a way for me to show you guys discipline. We're entering the stock at $91.50. Our stop is at 91, uh, uh, I know, a stop, actually our stop was down here at 90. So this is going to be, it's going to change this a little bit, edit text. Okay, see that red line? That's right about where our stop is, okay? Our target has been placed at 102.50. Would anyone be interested in a trade where you get in at $91.50 and you ride it up to 102.50? That's your potential win. And if you're, if you're wrong, you lose $1.50. So think about your, your risk reward. Okay, you're risking a dollar fifty to make eleven dollars and fifty cents. Anyone be interested in a stock where you're risking a dollar fifty to make eleven fifty? Anyone? Yeah, exactly. All day, right? This is what I'm teaching you guys is to be selective. Find the right trade. Okay? Go out there, find the McDonald's, go out there and find the Goldman Sachs, right? And look at Goldman Sachs and say, hey, you know what? I'm seeing this pattern in here. How do I trace it? You know, how do I look at it? How do I analyze it? What am I looking for in terms of the trade? I can basically say, you know what? Yeah, there's a trade out there for me. Why am I so delayed? There we go. You know, here was a trade that we were looking at, okay, right here when it broke out of 112. Okay, so we can look at this when it broke 112. Look at this. What a coincidence. We started to get the downtrend from about 127 down to 110. So we've got a 17 point move to the downside when it broke out of 112. What's 17 off of 112? Anybody? Someone take $112 and minus 17 off of it. Wow. Ah, look at where it stopped, folks. Look at where it stopped. Stopped, came up, stopped again, came down, and that's where we are right now, okay? Anyone be interested in looking at a trade that would have potentially given you that? There's two trades, two trades right there, okay? All right, both to the downside. I'm sorry, one McDonald's to the upside, Goldman Sachs to the downside, and here's another one, Cat. And if you guys, if anyone knows me, and there's several people in here that do, know I've been calling these things out in the, in the chat room and know these, I've been calling these things out in the classes, right? <clears throat> so, Michael, um, my my scanning technique is very archaic. To be honest with you, okay. I am a chart reader. Okay, now um, I read through. I rip through charts um, as a part of my business plan. Okay, hey, your question is how do I find them? is I have a, a part of my business plan of trading. I will spend a day, probably Sunday night, okay, 
ripping through the markets and ripping through charts for an hour to two hours. Okay? I then create a list. Well, what list am I using? Um, uh, yes, I can use the scan tab as well. Uh, I can use pattern recognition as well. I am an old school guy. I'm 38, but I have a lot of old school technology uh, tendencies. Okay, I love using technology, but I also know that I could read through them. It also gives me a feel into what the market is doing. So, for example, when I come over here to this list that's called ETF list, and I know you guys have seen me do this before. Okay. Let me go over here and studies and delete studies. Okay, here's just a standard daily chart. Okay. I could very easily rip through these 15 ETFs to get an idea of our overall market economy. Here's gold. Here's biotech. Here's the real estate. Transportation, pharmaceuticals, retail, semiconductors, home builders, uh, materials, financial, okay, industrial, technology, consumer staples, healthcare, right? I can run through these and get an idea of what the market's doing. A scan isn't going to tell me that, right? This tells me at least, hey, you know what? Right now, take a look at consumer staples. This is consumer discretionary. We hit a high and we're rolling over, right? Tell me which one of these is in, in a bullish uptrend. Oh, there we go. Consumer staples, the XLP. Looks like it's starting to come up and possibly hit its head on resistance. Okay. This one's kind of starting downtrending, right? Downtrending, downtrending, downtrending. Slideways trending with a head and shoulders pattern. Okay. SMH downtrending. RTH doing okay. The uh, pharmaceuticals, not so much. Okay, so overall, what do you think the economy looks like, folks? Here's the transports. Do you, you, you see a lot of bullish tendencies in the markets? Yeah, these are going sideways. The IBB has biotech. So I can very easily look at these and say, okay, you know what? Not one of them is really screaming to the upside. We're getting kind of rolling over to sideways to easing downward trending. Now, looking at this, is anyone surprised that our markets have been rolling over recently? You shouldn't, because this has all been telling you that every one of our major indices in the United States has been kind of sideways to down. So when I look at that, I could say, you know what? Okay, how long did it take me to kind of rip through that? Pretty quick, right? Then I can go and now drill down into that further. Okay, well, if I want to go place a trade in things that are going relative, what's going on in the healthcare sector? And I go and start looking at the ETFs. I go look at what's the major ones that are in this ETF. You know, what is Humana doing? What is, um, you know, um, Sienna? Um, what are all the major healthcare company providers doing that I could then go track, right? Uh, consumer staples. What is, what, is a, what is a Johnson & Johnson doing? Where are they at? You know, are they a J&J? &J? Are they, um, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Are they um, XLP? I just kind of took that out, XLP. You know, are they, are, is Johnson & Johnson looking pretty similar to the consumer staples, J&J? &J? No, look at that. See that? So is Johnson & Johnson helping the XLP right now, or are they hindering the XLP? Right now they're hindering the XLP. So, you know, someone else in that group is starting to push that, is, being, is pushing this sector, and Johnson & Johnson is pushing this thing down, right? So I very quickly will spend all of a few minutes looking at the ETFs and the major stocks that track those ETFs. Does that make sense to you guys? Is there any mystery there? Uh, Jerry, that's where some of the indicators are going to come in, where we're going to use MACDs and stochastics and start looking at overbought and oversold conditions, RSIs and CCIs, okay, or moving average crossovers. Right, so we can either be using a moving, moving average crossover. We could be using MACDs and stochastics to help us see retracements. Uh, you can help them see them in um, pretty logical, right, Mike? <laughs> Sorry, Michael. Uh, pretty logical, right, Michael? Um, you can start looking at short-term reversals in terms of uh, candlestick patterns, longer-term reversals in terms of head and shoulders. Okay, um, moving average crossovers. So it depends. You know, the you know studies, load studies. You know, I mean, you want to put a, um, 
um, is a moving average. Here's a bunch of moving averages on here, right? And so you can start looking at seeing if there's a cross, but this is still relatively bullish, right? Versus here's, here's a, a stock that went up and it started rolling over. So when you hit this high and it pulls back to support and continues to drop from support, now you're looking at this thing being a rollover. And what do you get right here? You get a short-term cross of the 50, 30-day moving average right here. And I bet if we used a 20-day, 50-day, which I'd prefer to use because it's shorter term, you'd see it crossing a few days earlier. So now you're getting a cross to the downside. So it's a combination of things. It's whether or not, um, you know, you're using moving average crossover uh, or you're using, you know, there are, there are a lot of technical indicators. Uh, Marion, it does take me a very, it's, I am very quicker, I'm much quicker at it than you are. I 100 thousand percent agree with you which doesn't make any sense whatsoever because anything over 100 is is, is what it means I 100 percent agree with you but the question you have to ask yourself is who, who taught me and did i learn it because here's the reality folks i'm just some guy from new york went to school on a partial soccer scholarship for architecture i did not go to school for 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 financial at all okay I sat down and learned these patterns, okay? I applied them to real market strategies, okay? I learned them. Let me be very, very clear. I learned them, every one of them. I am not clairvoyant. My mom had me, uh, 1973 I was born. I, last time I asked her, I asked her this question once just for fun. I said, Mom, when I was born, did they say congratulations? You, you're, here's your son, the trader, or did they say congratulations? Here's your baby boy. She goes, "What the heck are you talking about, Ralph?" <laughs> okay, I wasn't born a trader, folks. I had nothing to do with trading until I graduated college. I can teach you the stuff. It's all learnable. So you're very, very, you have a very valid point, Marion. Very valid point. I go through this very quickly. I only have you for an hour, and we're almost done. Already, right? But the reality is, I can teach it to you. I had to learn it myself. And I know a lot of you guys have sent me complimentary emails that I really know what I'm talking about, and you really make it seem, you know, Ralph, thank you, you know, you make it seem, like, you know, uh, easy, and, you know, I appreciate your, you know, upfront. I appreciate the emails, but I learned it. That's it. <laughs> Actually, Michael, at 1 o'clock, I have to start my uh, options uh, chat room. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've got, I've, I've got to unfortunately get into that. I'm doing a chat room now weekly on options. So we have, uh, we have Fausto's stock chat room and we have my options chat room that we're going to be doing now weekly. So I got to get into that. Um, well, see, the thing is people lose money trading because they don't have a discipline. They don't know where to get in and get out. You need to have an, a discipline, a way to get in and get out. You need to mark the small loss. Take the loss and get out. And that I appreciate your honesty in coming up and telling us this because people don't like to talk about their losses. We all lose. I've lost money. I've lost more money than I should have because I didn't listen, and I had to learn it for myself. And now that I've learned it for myself, I continue to follow the strategies that I teach you guys. Let me teach you how to do it without having what Kamal said is where I lost a ton of money. Let me get to you before that happens. Because you guys go out in the market and and um, um, we're building it out now, and um, I actually uh, will have Greg start sending out an email uh, so you guys can actually start getting into that, okay? It's something new. We just literally started. I'm going to start it with some of the new client, some of the existing option students um, are going to be getting an email um, to get started. Well, come on, then come on board, buddy. Let me have you come on board and everyone out there. My goal, and, and people who have taken my classes should know this by now, um, I, um, I care about you making money. That's all I care about. Um, well, we're going to run uh, the options thing into the chat room today. 
Okay, I'm, I'm going to be running it inside the chat room. Uh, so if you can get into the chat room, uh, I'm going to run it inside the chat today because I'm asking my IT guy to build out a whole new system and to circumvent that. And uh, I'm going to be running it within inside the chat. So if you have access to the chat, um, you're more than welcome to hop in and you can get into what I'm doing. If if not, they'll get you they'll get you access for the rest of the month. Okay. So Jay, you should be. Uh, you should be in there at one o'clock. Um, I will ask you in the next couple of minutes. All right. Now, getting back to technical analysis, you're welcome. Um, there's a lot that I'm going to be able to teach you guys. Okay. But without you guys being in the class, I can't teach you anything. If you're interested in the class that I'm going to be teaching, I have one coming up for technical analysis. Okay. I've got a few of my option students in here. They're repeat customers. They like to hear me speak, and um, I enjoy teaching them. Okay. Um, I would love to be able to work with you guys on a, on a more regular basis. And if you do have any interest, please come and find me. This is the class. Okay. I, oops, that's the wrong date. We have a class. Let me get the right date for you, though. We have a class that's coming up. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. June 15th, 14th, and 15th. All right. This is when we're going to be teaching the class, folks. Okay. This Thursday and Friday, I'm going to be teaching a class in technical analysis. Now, here's the cool thing, folks. If you are already a student, it's unlimited retakes for life, okay? So if you're an existing student, I want you to pop in, okay? Get in there because you already paid for it. It's unlimited retakes, guys. Get in, take the class. I'm going to argue with you guys that you, most of you have probably lost more than $1,495 in your trading, okay? Now, I'm not telling you that my class is going to stop you from losing. It's going to stop you from big losses, okay? You should be going in there and taking small losses, okay? Let me ask you guys something. If I, if I showed you a way to put stop losses in, so I saved you $1,495, would it be worth it? If I saved you $1,495 in potential losses that you would have taken, wouldn't that class be worth it? What do you think, guys? If you basically took this class and basically broke even just off the first five or 10 or 15 trades, absolutely. Because losing will totally, de totally deflate your trading. You keep losing and you don't know what you're doing to make money, you're going to get shot. You know, you're going you're gonna, to you're totally walk away from trading. You know, when we start looking at these bull flags, these bear flags, these head and shoulders, I'm showing you a discipline to what to do to follow me. Just follow me. That's all I'm asking. That's it. There's no black box here. This is all stuff you can do in any place you can look at a chart. In any country, you can do this with stocks, options, futures, Forex. Uh, does Thinkorswim have brokers? I need a program more immediate. Uh, you Thinkorswim is a brokerage. They're owned by TD Ameritrade. You can place trades through them. Uh, so, Jen, give us a call here in the office if we can help you. Remember, the guys in the office can help also help you with what trade platform you should be using. They can walk through with you. We, know, we have a lot of different uh, affiliations with a lot of different brokers. So give us a call here in the office, okay? Any other questions, guys? Please. The class is June 14th and 15th. Unlimited retakes for life. I'm going to give you the setups. I'm going to give you uh, a chart for technical analysis for... Um, Candlestick charts for um, um, for price patterns, okay? Um, if you have any problems getting into the chat room, please call the office, all right? I'm going to be switching over to that right here in a minute. Appreciate that, Michael. All right, folks, listen to me. I really appreciate your time. I really thank you for being here. I, but the reality is, You've got to spend the time learning this stuff. You have to. If you don't, you're just going to be swimming around just trying to tread water, okay? Let me show you how to do this, okay? Let me show you what I've learned. I bring up all these good trades, and yet people ask me, how can I learn it? Well, guess what? I can teach it to you. Just spend the time. All right, guys, I really want to see you in class next week. If you have any questions, I'll be, I'll be available in, in about a half hour from now. 
Be more than happy to talk to you. If not, call the office, 1-877-702-9237 or 516-280-5350. Please call the office. Let us help you figure out what classes you need so we can get you on the right track so you are actually trace, placing profitable trades. That's the goal here, guys. That's the goal. All right, everybody. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Any more questions, please do send me an email, ralph, R-A-L-P-H, at ctucorp.com. Have a good day, all. Bye-bye.